Hello, my lovely students. Welcome once again to the revision show on Joy Learning TV. And today is time for elective ICT. And as you know already, on Joy Learning TV, on the revision show, that is where we select likely examination topics. We discuss it extensively. And then we put out some questions, likely as I mentioned, questions, and see whether you can answer them. And then, as usual, our problem of the day that comes at the end of the revision show. So on the show today, we... On the show today, we are looking at um, the elective ICT, and our topic for discussion today is types of networks. Types of network. And my name is Felix, operating crime. I'm going to be your facilitator for today's lesson. I want you to call a friend, to call a friend that it's time for ICT. Let's gather on our TV sets, on YouTube, get your notebooks, your pens, or your computer, if you have, and then let's do this important assignment or exercise. Right, so let's zoom into our objectives. Right, so today's topic, Types of network by the end of the lesson, the student will be able to one identify the types of network. The student will be able to identify the types of network and two explain the above types of network. So, the various types of network we are going to explain it extensively and then three mention the features of each of the above types of network. So these are the three objectives that we have um, jotted down. Let's see whether we can achieve these objectives. And I know we are going to achieve them so well. Right. So we get into the introduction. Right, so um, we've heard about networking, and we know that networking go hand in hand with connectivity. It goes hand in hand with connectivity. Right, so in computing, when you talk about connectivity, it is simply the ability of devices, systems, or network to establish connection and communicate with each other. So anytime we talk about connectivity, we are talking about the ability for devices, network, databases to be able to what? Connected and share resources and share resources or communicate with one another. So connectivity play a key role in networks or in networking. And it plays a crucial role in today's interconnected world, enabling information exchange, data transfer, and collaboration across various platforms and devices. So today, we cannot do away with networks. We actually use our smartphones, and we access so many contents on the internet and we ask ourselves where are we getting all these materials that we are consuming online and it all it is all because computers all over the world are connected together on one platform that we call the internet and today we are going to look at the types of networks the types of network and connectivity play a crucial role in computer networks. Right. So
So um, we will basically define what a network is. And I know you can define a network on your own. I know in a basic school, your computer, your, your, your ICT teachers told you network is simply the connection of two or more computers. The connection of two or more computers to share common resources. They are right. They are, they are excellent. But let's see how I am also going to define what a network is. And I know you are going to enjoy or like my definition. What is a computer network? What is a computer network? A computer network is a collection of interconnected devices, such as computers, servers, routers, switches, and other hardware components that are linked together to enable communication and data sharing between them. Yes, so this definition is throwing more light on what our basic school teachers define a network to us as basically the connection of two or more computers to share common resource. And here we are saying that it is the collection of interconnected devices. The interconnected devices that we are talking about here is the computers, is the servers, is the routers, is the switches that enable this connectivity to be possible. So when you talk about networking, it is simply connecting devices or the interconnected interconnection of devices such as computers, routers, servers, switches, and other hardware components. When we talk about other hardware component, we today modern TVs, smart TVs are also connected to the internet where you can stream certain program live on the internet. And that is why we are saying that other hardware components are also linked or connected to each other to enable communication and sharing of data among these devices and hardware resources. Right, I hope you can define network on your own. I want you to do that in your homes and then we see it at the comment section will further explain it. It's very, very simple. Right, let's move on. So I have a diagram on the slide, which you can all see a basic networking concept. So we have our computer, computer one, computer two, and computer three. Which, so we have the laptop computer, which is a computer one. Then we have a desktop computer, which is computer two. And then we have a tablet, which is a computer three. And you can see that they are all wireless devices. They are all wireless devices, which is connected to the communication device. And the communication device is the router that we see in there. So the computers communicate with the router, which is also connected to the printer. And then we have computer four, which is a smartphone, a smartphone. And you see that the router or the communication device is linked with the printer via communication transmission media, which is a cable. It's a cable. So this is a fiscal cable, which is wired media. It's a wired media. But the computers are wireless, which uses the air to connect with the communication device. So this is a modern 
network concept that is shown in the diagram that we all see on our screens right so the networking that we are talking about is all what we have demonstrated it in this diagram and i hope you enjoy the diagram so well so let's move on to the types of networks the type of network so i have outlined six types of networks and um we are going to explain um the important ones and then leave the rest for you to further do your research on them right so the first one is personal area network personal area network pan then two we have campus area network that is can and three we have storage area network sun four we have local area network lan and five we have metropolitan area network which is man and then lastly six we have the wide area network which is one so these are the six types of network that I have outlined in this lesson. And I hope there are more that you can further do research and look out for them. But for the purposes of discussion, um, some of them will be easily um, explained. And some of them we are going to dive into it extensively to understand it so well, especially the local area network, which is LAN, the metropolitan area network, which is MAN, and then the wide area network, which is WAN. These are the three key important types of network that we are going to what, explain it extensively, looking at their features, looking at their advantages, their disadvantages, and then some examples of network system used under these types of network right so let's zoom into explaining all these types of networks so we we'll begin with personal area network personal area network which is pan so personal area network pan is a computer network used for communication among computer devices including telephone telephones a personal digital assistant in proximity to an individual person the emphasis is in proximity in proximity to an individual person I have a problem with my touch right so so pan is a type of network which is used to communicate among computer devices such as telephones and PDS which are in proximity to one individual or to an individual person and that is the reason why we said it's a personal area network so this happens maybe at home you can set up your own personal area network where you'll be able to what, transfer your data your files your document on your own and if you set up such a system or set a network, we call it a personal area network. And so the devices may or may not belong to the person in question. Yes. So the devices which use which is used under personal area network may or may not belong to the person who set up the network. So please, I want you to take note 
of this one. This one is not all that used. It is used at home or in private offices, etc., and etc., which is used by a single person who wants what send other files and data to certain point in their office or in their rooms, right? So this is a simple setup for a PAN, a personal area network. So you can see that there is a laptop which is used as the central server and that laptop is connected or surrounded by eight clients. We have the smartphone, we have the printer, we have the mouse, and then we have some um, phone connected, and then we have headphone with a mic, also connected to this personal area network. Remember we are saying that it is an individual who uses this type of network, and the devices which is used and a personal area network may or may not belong to the person who is using the network. Let's look at the features of PAN. One, it's the reach of a PAN is typically a few meters. So devices are connected within some few meters, the reach of the network. It doesn't go beyond the room in which the devices are situated. So they are always in the confined room on which the network is being set up. It can be wired or wireless. So the, uh, the Personal area network can be, the network can be set up using wired cables or wireless means. Okay, we have said that we can use cabling in connecting to the devices or we can use the air, which is the wireless, through Bluetooth or infrared or maybe the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi is one common wireless means of connecting devices today. And then three, it is the smallest of all the network. PAN is the smallest of all the network. So this is the three features of PAN that I have outlined. So please take note of them anytime that you are asked in the exams to state features of personal area network. These are the three features that I want you to what, um, outline and discuss anytime questions are asked on the features of PAN. Right. I hope you have taken note of the features of PAN. Let's look at the advantages. Even though the PAN is set up by a single individual, in the home or in a small office, private office, that the person may find him or herself, there are some advantages that comes with personal area network. When one, no extra space requires. So we have said already that PAN, the network, is set up in a single room or in a confined area which doesn't extend to even another room. So there is no extra space required. The exact space that you have is where the network is set up. So he said personal area network does not require extra wire or space. And two, the PAN, it connects to many devices at a time. So when you set up a PAN, there is the possibility or the luxury of adding new devices or additional devices on the network. And then three, it is cost e effective.
span is cost effective. All what you need is your devices and eight transmission medium, whether you are going to use wired or wireless cables or the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth and you are off to go. You don't need any other special device. And that is the reason why it is cost effective. Easy to use. So the pan is easy to use. No advanced setup is required. No, there is no advanced setup that is needed under pan. It is very simple to use. And it is reliable. It is reliable. There is no way there will be problems. There is no way there is going to be a break in transmission of data communication. So it says if you use these types of data connection within 10 meters, then your network is stable and reliable. And it is secured. This network is secured because all the devices are authorized before data sharing. And third party injection and data hacking are not possible under PAN. So these are the six advantages that I've outlined under personal area networks. Take note of it anytime questions are asked on the advantages of a personal area network. These are some of the things that you can say in the exams to end the marks that the examiners are requiring from you. Right, let's continue. Right, so we move on to the second type of network, which is the local area network. Remember, we look at the campus area network and the storage area network. We are not going to explain them. They all work hand in hand like the personal area network. So we are not going to discuss them extensively. So we zoom right to the local area network because the storage area network and campus area network also work just like the personal area network. So you can zoom into a second type of network, which is the local area network. In short, we call it the LAN, L-A-N, LAN. That's how we pronounce it. But this is not <laughs> the LAN on which we are stepping on. This is different. This is a short form of a local area network, right? So the term LAN refers to a local area network or a group of interconnected networks that are under the same administrative control. So local area networks are designed to be controlled under the same ad administration. So when you say the same administration, when you take an example in your school, the network system that you have set up in your school is a key example of a local area network. It is being controlled by the confines of your school alone. If you go beyond the school, you may not have access to this type of network because we are not part of the community. Then it says that in the early days of networking, lands are defined as small networks that existed in a single fiscal location. Lands are defined as small networks that existed in a single fiscal location. Yes. So land doesn't go beyond eight confined areas. It remains at the land on which it has been demarcated. If you go beyond that land, you'll be off from this network. And that is how 
LANs are set up. Whilst LANs can be a single network installed in a home or small office, the definition of LAN has evolved to include interconnected local area networks consisting of many hundreds of hosts installed in multiple buildings and locations. Right. So we know that in our school community, there are so many buildings that are in the community. We have the administration block. We have the departmental offices. We have other, the kitchen. All these people are also connected to this local area network that we are talking about. And therefore, um, LAN also is able to what, connect computers far apart on that one site we call our school campus. So I always, I always use our school campuses network as LANs for my students. Right. So um, that is a local area network. So there is a diagram here that demonstrates how LANs are set up. So the land has its central node, which is a router or a switch, which is, the mid, which is in the middle. And I hope you can all see the route, router or the switch in the middle of our diagram. And all the devices surrounding the router is connected to it with that blue lines, with the blue lines. So we have the computer, one, two, three. Then we have the network printer, and then the server is also connected to the router or the switch, which we can see in the picture. So this is how a local area network is set up. So in the exams, if they ask you to draw a diagram to buttress your explanation of your local area network, you can draw this diagram that I'm, I have displayed on the screen. So you can easily draw it somewhere so that in case it comes in the exams, you can also draw. And I know that this is very simple drawing that you can do. You draw your devices, your computers, your router or your switch, and your server, and your printer, and then you label them to get the score or the needed score that you deserve. Right. Then we have a local area network which spins in a taller building or a, a series of floors in a tower. And you see that we have the customer service office at the far top. And then in the middle floor, we have the marketing department office. And then the down or the ground floor are the host, which is the server for the local area network. So the ground floor is demarcated to take the server or to have the server room where all the other department picks information from the server room. So you can see the red lines which move from the ground floor and then it runs through the offices in the upper floors. And that is how local area network is also set up in a building, in a taller building where offices are situated in. All right. Then there is also another diagram of the local area network where the switch or the router 
stays in the middle then there is an internet that is situated in the router and it passes through the server and then to the other clients we have the smartphone and then the printer which some of them are using cabling cables and some of them are wireless so these are the two uh, communication media oh sorry the transmission medium that is used in this network so it says that lands are designed to operate within a limited geographical area yes we have said already that the lands are set up in a confined location in a confined location which has series of uh, buildings in those locations right and it allow multiple access to high bandwidth media yes so to be able to extend your LAN then you need a high bandwidth media to extend into multiple uh, locations right so let's look at the features of the local area network the first feature is that the coverage area is generally a few kilometers so the coverage area area for the land or the local area network is in a few kilometers it cannot go beyond maybe 100 meters then it means that you need other special devices to do that right and two the second feature is that using different dedicated transmission medium you can achieve a high speed of data transfer yes under land and three in land you can run the multiple devices to share a transmission medium and then four you can use the different topologies mainly bars and ring in lands and the key the topology there don't be scared with the topology where in in networking when you talk about topology is simply the arrangement the arrangement of the computers and other devices which are set up on the network and what we are saying is that the basic topologies that we can use is either the star or the ring under sorry it's either the bus or the ring the bus or the ring in land right then the communication quality is better in land than the other types of network like the one or even the man the transmission error rate is low as compared to one as compared to one which is the wide area network then the land supports a variety of communications transmission medium yes so in land as we have said already in lands the communication mediums can be of wired or wireless so when we talk about wired transmission we are talking about cablings and then the wireless transmission we are talking about the transmission through the air so he said the wired um, transmission can be the ethernet cables and the ethernet cables are the thin cable the thick cable and the twisted pair then today we have the the fiber optics the fiber optic cables and then there is a wireless transmission as well we have talked about the wi-fi or the bluetooth etc and etc right and then another feature is that the land usually has low cost installation expansion and maintenance 
a LAN installation is relatively simple, good scalability. It is very simple and good scalability. So it means that setting up the LAN is so simple. All what you need is your devices and your transmission medias, either wired or wireless. So setting up this system, you don't need any extra uh, equipment to be able to set up LANs. It's very, very simple. And then you can upgrade, add more devices. And that is what we mean by it has good scalability. It has good scalability. If you want to what, expand the network, it is so simple to expand the network under land as compared to other types of networks. Right. Let's look at advantages of land. The advantages of land. One, sharing of resources. So land provides the sharing of resources. Basically, that is the main purpose of a local area networks. Sharing of resources. Either hardware resource or a software resource. So when you talk about a common hardware resource which is shared on LAN, is the printer. So if you are connected on a local area network, you need to buy only one printer. You don't have to buy multiple printers. All what you need is to purchase one printer. So in the office, when you set up a local area network, it is advisable to buy one printer, which serves all the computers which are, or all the clients which are connected to the network. So LANs provide sharing of resources, either a hardware resources, which I have mentioned, um, the printer, or a software resources, which is of programs or data, which are shared on the network. Then the second advantage of LAN is that there is a client and server relationship. There is a client and server relationship. So what it means is that in LAN, the client computers take instructions from the server. The client computers always solicit data or information from the server, and this creates the relationship. There is no way the clients will be able to communicate with themselves without taking instruction from the server. And that is what you mean by there is a client and server relationship. Always the client takes instructions from the server. And then there is sharing of the internet. Right. So when there is an internet facility on the server, the server is able to share it with all the clients, with all the client computers. Right. So that is what you mean by sharing of the internet. And then we have software program sharing. Yes. So on a local area network, if one software is purchased, it can be shared on the clients. Right. And then securing of data. Securing of data. So this is a crucial point under land. So all the data is reside in the server. Data is stored in the server. So the client computers request it as and when they need it. And that is what we mean by securing of data. Because the data is stored in the server. And the client have access to them whenever a request is being made. Then communication is easy, fast and time-saving. Yes, so 
and the local area network, it is so easy and fast to transfer data from one computer to the other. You don't have to walk into other office or other positions before data or file is being transferred. It quickly sits by your client computer and then you send it to wherever client computer which has connected to the land. And then we have computer identification. Yes, so the local area network is able to give each computer on the network a MAC address, a MAC address, and is temporarily stored in the switch or the router during communication. Right, so these are the advantages of the local area network that I've outlined, and I know you can explain them anytime that you are asked. You should be able to state them and explain them as I've done it so well for you. If you don't understand any of this point, you can further draw my attention on the comment section or wherever you are watching. You can jot it down and then you ask later. Right, let's move on to the disadvantages. Right, even though there are so many advantages that comes with the local area network, there are some few disadvantages. I have outlined four disadvantages of this local area network. So anytime we talk about network, then we are talking about security. So data security is a big problem. Data security is a problem under land. Yes. So you should always be careful whenever you are using a network because somebody can use your or your or have access to your data or information without your knowledge. So security should be uh, paramount to you whenever you are using a network. So under land, data security is also a challenge. So you should be mindful of that. Then two, we have limitation of distance. Yes. So I said that land is within some confined location. It doesn't go beyond those locations. So if you move out from that location or that area, there is no way you have access to that, which limits you in some aspect, which limits you in some aspect. So uh, maybe in your schools, when you close or you vacate from school, there is no way you can have access as a student in your school local area network, which limits you in some way or the other. Right. Then three, server crashes may affect all computers. So in local area network, when the server is down or there is a problem on the server, it affects the entire network. It means that the network cannot continue again. Data cannot be shared again. And therefore, it brings the systems to a halt. Right. And then the last one or the last disadvantage is that setting up a land is expensive. Setting up a land is expensive. You need so many equipment, computers, routers, switches, hubs, etc., etc. And all these devices are very, very expensive. Right. So these are the four disadvantages of setting up a local area network. And I know anytime exams are asked, you can even outline more disadvantages of a local area network. Right. Let's move on to our third type of network, which is the metropolitan area network. The metropolitan area network. And in short, we call it MAN. MAN. So 
a metropolitan area network is a large computer network that usually spans a city or a large campus. A metropolitan area network is a large computer network that usually spans a city or a large campus. Right, so when you talk about the MAN or the Metropolitan Area Network, we are saying that it connects networks that are within cities or campuses that are very, very, very large. So when you take the University of Ghana as an example, you, University of Ghana is having several satellite campuses even within Accra. You have the city campus, the main campus, and other satellite uh, campuses. And to be able to set up a network for University of Ghana, as an example, then the type of network that you have to choose is a metropolitan area network because of the campuses which are far apart within the city. And then it says that a man usually interconnects a number of local area networks. So it means that the metropolitan area network connects small local area network that creates the man. So it means that when you take the University of Ghana as an example, um, the main campus may set up their local area network then the city campus will also set up their own local area network. And because they are the same university, they link together. Or they connect these two local area networks together to form the metropolitan area network, which is MAN. And it said, lands using a high capacity backbone technology such as the fiber optic, the, the fiber optical links, and provide uplink services to wide area networks or ones, and the internet. So it means that when you are setting up the man, there are some special communication devices that you need to purchase or that is required under the metropolitan area network. And the first one that we have mentioned here is the fiber optical links, the fiber optical links. And then we have the uplink services. So in setting up the metropolitan area network, you need some communication devices. And some of these communication devices is what I have mentioned in here, where we have the fiber optical links, and then we have the uplink services that provide or that extend these lands that we are talking about. Right. So this is a typical diagram that demonstrates the metropolitan area network. So you realize that there are satellites uh, locations that are linked together to form one network. So we have one, two, three, four, and even five. All of them are connected on a network which we call, it forms the metropolitan area network. So let's look at the features, and I have outlined three features of the metropolitan area network. And one, it says that it is larger than land. Yes, we have already said that the metropolitan area network is formed when two or more lands are connected together. And that is the reason why we are saying that 
the man is larger than the land. Right. And then it spins over a city. So the network is connected within a city. Whilst the land, we say that it spins in one location. In one location. This one spins over a city which has so many uh, satellite campuses or branches of some companies, right? So these are the two features that I have outlined for the man. Let's look at the advantages of man, the advantages of the metropolitan area network. One, it says that it is less expensive. It is less expensive to attach man with one. Yes, so if you have a metropolitan area network, it is so easy to extend it to be a wide area network. That is basically why we are saying that it is less expensive. That is, if the man is already set up, it is less expensive to extend that network to a wide area network. And we are going to explain the wide area network in just now. Two, sending local emails. So man helps in sending local emails. You don't need the internet before you can send emails to the other branches of your organization or, or sending emails to your satellite campuses if you are running an university or something. So on man, you can send local emails fast and free. Yes, the emphasis is on free because there is no supported internet that is linked to man. Three, there is a high speed than one. So the man has a high speed than the one. Four, sharing of the internet. So man provide a sharing of the internet. It means that when the first campus or the first or the main branch has internet facility, it is extended to all the other branches, which they all enjoy the internet facility. And then uh, five, conversion from land to man is easy. Yes, so you setting up a man, it can be set up by joining the local area network to form a metropolitan area network. And then there is high security. There is high security. Man has high security level than one because there are some restrictions that are set up under man, which is not exposed to so many hackers. And that's the reason why we are saying that under man, there is high security as compared to the wide area network. Then let's look at the disadvantages and then we take a break and come and look at the wide area network, the wide area network. So I've outlined five disadvantages of the uh, metropolitan area network. The first disadvantage is that it is difficult to maintain a man. It is difficult to maintain a man because um, it becomes bigger than and becomes difficult to manage it. So whilst the network are expanding, whilst there are so many branches or satellite campuses, it becomes difficult to manage the network. Management of the network becomes difficult. Then internet speed differences. Right, so 
whilst the network expands or spans around, it slow down the internet facility that is set up on the network. When it is transferred to the other branches, you see that the speed of that uh, other network cannot be compared to where the internet is being set up. And there is always a hacker attack. There, is, there are hackers attack on man because of some special communication devices that is attached to it. And then technical people requires to set it up. Technical people are required. So there is no way um, individual lay person can set up a metropolitan area. You need to speak to an expert. You need to speak to a network administrator to be able to set a metropolitan area network for you. And then the last one, there are more wires required under the metropolitan area network because of the distances. So it requires additional and long transmission media or the cablings that are used in connecting your metropolitan area network. So on this note, let's pause and take a, a break, go and drink water, and then come back refresh so that we can look at the wide area network.